education, public safety, health care, government, business. These and other important issues affecting our local community are identified and discussed with local and civic leaders here on Community Impact. Now with today's guest, here's our host, Jay Police. Welcome to Community Impact. My guest today is Dr. Adam Schaffner. He is a fellowship trained Manhattan plastic surgeon. He's here today to talk about plastic surgery and how to be more discerning. In other words, if you're going to get plastic surgery, uh, Dr. Schaffner wants you to do your homework. Dr. Schaffner, great to have you here. Community Thank you very Impact. much. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, yeah. T tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, plastic surgery, always something you were interested in? I've been interested in plastic surgery for many years. Uh, plastic surgeons in the family, and it's a field within medicine where you can make a significant impact in the life of a patient in a very short period of time. And I think it's that ability which attracted me to become a plastic surgeon. I, and you have family members. Members, father, uncles, uh, aunts that have that have been plastic surgeons. An uncle and first cousin who are both plastic surgeons. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So in, in many ways, it's kind of like the family trade to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> well, something like that. So not quite the family business, but uh, definitely a number of family members who are all in the same business. Yeah, yeah. I, I I could ask you why are you here today because I think you have a very valid reason for just that question. So I will say why why are you here today when you. Could could be back in your office, uh, you know, working with clients, but you've decided to reach out and educate the public, and you're doing that because you're seeing something that you really don't like. That's absolutely correct. So I will be in my office later today to <laughs> seeing patients, uh, but now it's my pleasure to be here to discuss a topic which I think the general public needs to know about, and that is that if they are interested in having plastic surgery, they need to do their homework and make sure that their plastic surgeon is in fact a plastic surgeon because there are a number of doctors who are out there who are not plastic surgeons who are performing cosmetic or aesthetic plastic surgery procedures but they're not plastic surgeons and the problem is is that some of these doctors don't have the knowledge training and skill in performing these types of procedures as they do in their own field and yet they're migrating to perform these type of procedures primarily because of the fact that the field in which they're currently practicing isn't offering the re reimbursement from insurance carriers that they previously had and as a result they're trying to augment the bottom line and the problem with that is that in many cases patients are experiencing complications because these doctors don't have the knowledge and training and skill that a plastic surgeon does. But they're, they're being allowed to practice. Uh, why? The, 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 the legislation, the government hasn't caught up? or, or I, It seems most people would say, well, how could that possibly be in America? How could this happen? To practice medicine in a state, you need to possess a medical license from the state in which they're practicing. Once they have that license, the license allows them to practice as a physician it doesn't restrict their practice to the specialty in which they completed a internship or residency or fellowship. And so as a result, they may be a pediatrician or an internist, an obstetrician gynecologist. It could even be someone who's a dentist. And say, okay, this was the field in which I completed my training. They may even be board certified in that specialty. And then they say, you know what? I've been practicing obstetrics and gynecology or internal medicine or pediatrics, but I really want to go do liposuction. But I don't want to go out back and become a resident in plastic surgery and potentially have to move to another area of the country and complete three years of additional training in that specialty. So I'll go take a weekend course or take a week off and go watch somebody. And then I'll come back and incorporate that into my practice. Well, the problem with that is, is that as anybody knows, whether it's in plastic surgery or any other field, be it in medicine or otherwise, you don't become an expert in a week or a month or even a year. And as a result, 
sometimes this can lead to problems for patients who become patients of doctors who have chosen this path to perform that type of procedure. So you, you mean you could legally do liposuction? Let's say you're a dentist or an eye doctor. You can legally do liposuction if you go get certified and that might mean a couple of courses, basically a weekend course or something of that nature? Sometimes you don't even have to become certified. They can go take a course and then perform it in their office. If you're a plastic surgeon and you perform a procedure under any sort of anesthesia, as part of being a member of the national society called the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, we pledge that we will only perform such procedures in accredited facilities and that we will have hospital privileges for any procedures that we perform under anesthesia. If you are not a member of that society and you're of a different specialty and you go ahead and decide that you want to practice outside of the specialty in which you were originally trained, the only thing that's really stopping you is the ability to purchase the equipment, potentially malpractice issues, and then state laws. And in many cases, state laws don't govern anything more than having the ability to have a medical license to mm -hmm. allow you to practice medicine in the broadest context. Mm -hmm. It doesn't restrict your practice to a given specialty. And this has resulted and manifested in some horror stories. Absolutely. The press recently has covered a number of these types of issues where you have doctors and sometimes even non-physicians who are performing cosmetic or aesthetic plastic surgical procedures on patients who go to these practitioners because they believe that they're in good hands and only after the fact learn otherwise. In some cases, it's the relatives who learn because unfortunately there have been deaths that have occurred as a result. Mm. And, and, and you yourself, through your practice, um, you became aware of this because exponentially more and more people were coming to see you who had gotten botched jobs, right? I mean, this has been growing, this phenomenon has been growing over the years? That's exactly right. So I have had many patients who have had procedures performed by physicians and non-physicians uh, who were unhappy with the results, who had complications, and came to me for corrective surgery to try to undo what was done, if you will, correct the problems, and then try to give them the result that they were looking for when they first went to see that individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doctor, what, what are the reasons, because they're, they're varied, what are the reasons someone would come to a plastic surgeon? Most of us would say vanity. Now, that's, that's one of the reasons, but, but really it's, it's more nuanced than that, isn't it? Absolutely. So many times when people hear plastic surgery, they're thinking of popular television shows where people have had an extreme makeover uh, <laughs> or, and they are uh, purely cosmetic in nature. And of course, a lot of what plastic surgeons do is perform cosmetic or aesthetic plastic surgery, whether it's of the face, breast, or body. But there are also many other things that plastic surgeons do. They help perform reconstructive procedures after breast cancer or skin cancer surgery has been performed. They will help restore someone after they've sustained a trauma or accident. Maybe it was a burn. Sometimes it's to correct and address birth defects. Uh, so plastic surgeons are able to do both aesthetic as well as reconstructive procedures. Mm -hmm. you, you told me a very interesting story off air uh, about someone who got into trouble with plastic surgery. Someone who we wouldn't assume could possibly get into trouble. A physician, a physician who sought out plastic surgery, a procedure, and, and, and wound up getting a botched job. Can you tell us about that? That's exactly right. So the patient herself is a physician, a lovely, bright, intelligent woman who wanted to improve the appearance of her face and sought out a doctor to help her with that. That doctor was an eye doctor a uh, board-certified ophthalmologist who had gone on to perform additional training in ophthalmic plastic and reconstructive surgery, or a fancy way for saying eye plastic surgery, and that doctor decided to expand onto the rest of the face to perform uh, a procedure that was uh, at that time known as a thread lift, and this is back in 2006, and the result was 
uh, asymmetry differences between the two different sides of the face that was significant and noticeable because everyone has mild asymmetries but this was something that was very significant it also left indentations and puckering uh, where the threads were in the skin and quite frankly just an unsightly appearance uh, to this patient's dissatisfaction mm -hmm. so she was subsequently referred to me after she had had this procedure to try to undo these problems which had developed as a result of the procedure and then try to lift things back to where they once were when she was younger and give her the appearance that she was looking for when she first went to see this other physician. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we were able to do so in this case. Mm -hmm. But it really illustrates the point. Here's a physician who, well, how, how could that happen? Because most of us think, well, she's a doctor. Right. Shouldn't she know better? Well, I'm not going to necessarily fault her entirely. So you would hope that physicians at large would understand intricacies between the different specialties. But quite frankly, physicians really know their own specialty and subspecialties, but as time goes on after medical school, know less and less about other specialties. So if you were to ask me about speci subspecialties within, say, cardiology, I probably know very little uh, about that compared to someone who is an internist or cardiologist. And so uh, that would not be unexpected. So the real situation here is that you have an educated patient who herself happens to be a healthcare professional who trusted another healthcare professional to do something that that doctor said he was qualified to do. And according to the state, he's able to do it. And the problem, of course, becomes is that when doctors perform procedures in which they lack the knowledge, training, and skill compared to the knowledge, training, and skill that they've acquired over years of training in their original specialty, it puts patients at risk. Mm -hmm. And that happens way too often way too often in my opinion. Uh, it's not an isolated case. The frequency with which I'm seeing these types of cases continues to grow and the press including the New York Times and USA Today and many other very popular news outlets have reported on many many problems in plastic surgery. People who have died, people who have uh, lost their eyesight, people who have had things injected into them such as Fix-A-Flat and silicone and <laughs> other things which have no, no uh, FDA approval to be injected into a human being for any purpose, let alone for cosmetic purposes. Fix a flat? You mean the, the, the can thing that I, that I try to use to try to fix my tire? That's correct. Oh, my. Unbelievable. Dr. Shafter, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and I'm going to ask you how our audience can guard against this and be more discerning when they're picking a plastic surgeon. You're watching Community Impact. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Community Impact. We're talking to Dr. Adam Schaffner, who is a fellowship trained Manhattan plastic surgeon. And Dr. Schaffner, you're here today because Really, you're, you're passionate about this subject because more and more people are coming into your office with botched jobs when they should have been seeing a plastic surgeon initially. Um, why? Why are they doing that? Is it money? Are they, uh, are they, how are they, you know, being led down that garden path? I mean, Sometimes it is a patient's desire to have a procedure performed but they lack the financial resources to have it performed by a plastic surgeon. And so they look to other alternatives, and sometimes those alternatives include procedures being performed by non-plastic surgeons at a lower price. Sometimes it can be misrepresentation by the physician themselves, where they will say that they are a cosmetic or aesthetic surgeon which is okay and sometimes they're saying they're a plastic surgeon when they're not a plastic surgeon and that's not okay and there's also confusion in the general public in many cases about the differences between someone who is a cosmetic or aesthetic surgeon which can be any physician of any specialty and a plastic surgeon and the difference that I think that your viewers really need to understand is that someone could be a pediatrician an internist 
an obstetrician, an emergency room doctor, and call themselves an aesthetic or cosmetic doctor or surgeon. Only a plastic surgeon is going to call themselves a plastic surgeon. And so the lesson is they have to do their homework because while that individual may be a phenomenal obstetrician, pediatrician, internist, or emergency room doctor, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have the knowledge, training, and skill to perform a plastic surgical procedure. You hear that term all the time, cosmetic surgery, cosmetic surgery, and it's funny, when you're when listening to you speak, I'm hearing that and I'm thinking, when did that come into my own consciousness? And it's almost as if that term just slipped in. And I, I must say, I, I have to plead ignorance here. I didn't realize that cosmetic surgeon, plastic surgeon, we're talking about two completely different things here, right? I wouldn't say they're completely different things because of the fact that plastic surgeons perform cosmetic or aesthetic surgery in addition to reconstructive surgery. However, as far as what a doctor calls himself or herself is important because the viewers of your show need to know that while a plastic surgeon does perform cosmetic or aesthetic surgery, there are other doctors who are non-plastic surgeons who are also performing cosmetic or aesthetic surgeries and those doctors may not be plastic surgeons and therefore may not have the knowledge, training, and skill that the patient believes he or she has when they go see them. What are the things we need to look for? What are the red flags that we need to be aware of when we're looking for a plastic surgeon, when we're looking to get that kind of a surgery, uh, surgery done? Well, I think first and foremost, it is imperative for a patient to ask the doctor, are you a plastic surgeon? If you're a plastic surgeon, are you board certified in plastic surgery? A doctor can say, yes, I'm board certified, but they may be board certified in a field that is unrelated to plastic surgery. They may say that they're board certified in cosmetic surgery, but the American Board of Medical Specialties has no board for cosmetic surgery. And it is the boards which are recognized by the American Board of Medical Specialties which have the ability to provide recognized board certification to doctors of various specialties, be it internal medicine, orthopedic surgery, or plastic surgery. I think it's also important for patients to ask their doctors how often they perform a given procedure in which that patient's interested. If the patient's interested in breast augmentation, but that doctor primarily focuses on rhinoplasty or nose jobs, that may not be the best fit. It's also important to make sure that the doctor is operating in an accredited facility so that the patient knows that if there's something that happens while the procedure is being performed, that they're in a place that can handle any potential things that might arise. And it's important to ask the doctor if they have hospital privileges for the procedure that they are going to be performing. Because that means that if there's a potential issue and the patient needs to have hospitalization afterwards, that there is going to be a smooth transfer in that care. Lastly, it's also important that, in my opinion, that a patient view before and after photographs, speak to patients on whom the doctor has operated for that given procedure, and to make sure that the patient feels comfortable with that doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you would think they would have done at least some of that already, but that is often not the case. That is true, and that is why I think we're seeing these types of problems arise with a greater degree of frequency and it's being reported by the media. Mm. You're also seeing people come into your office who have done procedures out of the country, they leave the country because they can get these procedures done inexpensively elsewhere and then they wind up coming back to you and they're a mess. They, they wind up spending way more money than they would initially have spent if they had the procedure done correctly. In many cases, that's true. While there are excellent surgeons throughout the world who are performing plastic surgery, medical tourism is becoming more and more common, and there are a lot of doctors who are practicing outside of the United States who advertise cosmetic or aesthetic procedures to people who live here in the United States, and the inducement is come to where we are 
So whether it be in the Caribbean or South America or where have you, to have procedures performed at a significantly lower price than the patients would pay for the same procedure here in the United States. And to a patient, that may seem very attractive. The problem is, is that they may be having procedures performed by people who don't have the same knowledge, training, and skill as plastic surgeons here in the United States. The facilities may not be held to the same standards that they are here in the United States to be accredited to perform anesthesia. And that's where patients can wind up having potential problems. The other issue is that Complications can happen even when a procedure is performed in the best of hands and that you want to be in a place where your surgeon is nearby so that if they develop a potential complication, it's not left to a surgeon uh, who did not perform the procedure or to a surgeon uh, who is uh, you know, many miles away from that surgeon who performed the procedure. Mm. Because a surgery is serious business. I mean, regardless of what you're going in for, you're going under the knife, you're going into surgery, it's serious business. You're Absolutely. going under an anesthetic, you better be sure that the people who are doing it know what they're doing. It's very important. It's not, it's not the type of thing to be going to the bargain basement you know, shops for. <laughs> yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that plastic surgery is not inexpensive. It's mm -hmm. not cheap. Mm -hmm. And like with most things in life, you get what you pay for. Yeah, yeah. And if finances preclude someone from having plastic surgery, I would say, wait, save. Yeah. And then when you have enough money saved up, then go and consider having plastic surgery for elective cosmetic or aesthetic procedures. Yeah. The fact is, is that don't try to have it done on the cheap because as you suggested, if complications develop, when you take the costs to treat the complications plus the original procedure, it sometimes can add up to be multiples of the cost of what it would have been to have the procedure performed correctly in the first place. Absolutely. And since we're speaking about cost, I just want to mention this because I think I would be remiss if I did not, but um, you do some wonderful work pro bono for some of our veterans and for other people who are in need of plastic surgery. I, I know you're probably not comfortable tooting your own horn, but t tell us about that. I do work with a number of foundations and organizations uh, to help provide plastic surgical procedures to people who otherwise might lack the resources to have such procedures performed, be they children, be they victims of domestic violence or victims of war, uh, most commonly now uh, soldiers who served in Afghanistan or Iraq and who sustained injuries. Uh, and while they may have had some reconstruction performed uh, through our military hospitals, uh, that their appearance can continue to be improved to allow them to feel better about the way they look and allow them to reintegrate into society. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that, that term, feel better about the way they look. In many ways, that's that's the, the the profession that you're in, helping people feel a little bit better about themselves. That's exactly right. So plastic surgery is about both form and function, about having somebody feel good about the way they look to make sure that if they had some sort of defect, whether it was due to a congenital or birth anomaly, whether it was due to trauma, whether it was due to cancer or something else that we're able to help make them whole again by reconstructing them. Sometimes it's that it's purely cosmetic, whether it's due to in the aging process that we want to reverse some of the signs of aging. Sometimes it's a person who has a bump on their nose. Maybe it's a woman who wants to enhance the size of her breasts. So through any one of those types of patients, we're able to help them feel better about themselves to improve their self-esteem, their ego, and allow them to live healthy and productive lives. Do you see a lot of men come through your office too? Absolutely. About 10% of all procedures that are performed in the United States now are performed on men. And men, I think, are more interested in plastic surgery now than they were in the past because of the fact that they realize the potential benefits that it can have for them both personally and professionally. And I think that we will continue to see that trend grow as in the future. Mm. Do, you, do you think I could use a little work maybe in the jowl area? We'll talk about that off there. Right? 
Doctor, it's been a real pleasure having you. I know that you have a website. Uh, maybe you could share it with our audience and they could learn a little bit more. Absolutely. It's www.drschaffner.com. Or your listeners can call 212-688-6600. Be more than happy to answer any questions. And I'm, I'm very glad that uh, your, your, the way you're dealing with your profession, that you've decided to reach out and, and start to educate the public as well. Um, I think there's a real need for that. Obviously, you do, uh, or you wouldn't be here today talking to us. So I do. We thank you so much. Thank you very Dr. much. Dr. Pleasure. Shaffner, a real pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've been watching Community Impact, and we will see you next week. Take care. You've been watching Community Impact, a public affairs presentation exploring issues that are important to the community of West Milford and the surrounding area of Passaic County and New Jersey. Community Impact is a production of WFME Television of West Milford, New Jersey. The opinions expressed on this program are those of our guests and not necessarily the views of the staff and management of WFME and Family Television.